Hey friends, it's Kristen here with Free Spirit Beading on the Softex Company YouTube channel. And we are here at a new time. Let's just make sure we pull up here. Hi, Aisha. All right, looking good. Um, yeah, we're here at a new time. So from this point forward, I will be here on Mondays at 3 p.m. Pacific time instead of my um, previous time of noon. And that is because we have started remote schooling as of this week here in Arizona. So hi, Sheila, welcome. I've got my kids home, I've got um, an 11th grader and a 9th grader, and they are both online and on Zoom and video chat with their teachers for a good portion of the day um, with just a couple little breaks here and there. So at this point, they're both done, and that is why I'm going to be here at before I join you guys live. I do work in the same room as one of my sons, so we can't both be on video at the same time. <laughs> yeah, Pamela, sorry. I had posted a note in the VIB group last week and then I updated again this morning, but I figured a few of you that are here normally with me um, probably will take a little while before you see the change. Hi, Karen. Yeah, I know. Um, it's kind of late. It feels like the end of my day. Uh, so that is going to be a little bit something to get used to, but I think it will also make my Monday morning a little bit calmer and I'm not like rushing to finish a bunch of stuff before I get to the video um, with you guys. So today, hi Susie, who else is here? Hi Lee, I am feeling better, lots better. Um, thank you. I had a wonderful vacation. We went away up north and got out of the heat for a couple of days. And then I came back and was feeling so great that I did some yard work and ended up bending in a weird way and pulling a muscle or straining my back. And um, that had me out for a good portion of last week. I think it took until um, till Friday until I really kind of felt like myself again. So I was really in pain from Monday through Thursday, which isn't too bad for a back injury. I know that they can take a lot longer. And I know I've hurt my neck in the past and it's taken a lot longer. So I'm very grateful that it didn't take any longer than it did. Um, but yeah, I'm feeling a lot better. And I think before I go out and do any yard work, because I've hurt myself two times this year, both times doing yard work. And it's because I just kind of got up and went, I think I really need to take a little time to do some stretching before I go out and, and tend to that yard. <laughs> so thank you for asking, feeling a whole lot better. Um, and Karen, right now it is 3 p.m. Pacific time. And hmm, coming in and out, is everyone having that difficulty? Oh, I'm seeing it actually on my screen too, that I am coming in and out. I wonder. Let's see if I can change without losing you. Um, let's see if I can change my settings here. Okay, I took it off the Wi-Fi, and now I'm just on the 3G. So let's see if that works a little bit better. We'll give it a second. Um, with so many people on our internet throughout the day, I may have to make a mental note to just restart the modem before I do my videos. Um, I'll, maybe I'll give myself a little post-it note for next Monday, and that may prove helpful. Sherry says it's 6 p.m. in Indiana. Jean, hello from Seaside, Oregon. Welcome. So am I, am I looking better? 
Karen says it's a little after six in South Carolina. Hi, Annie from Atlanta. It's 6 p.m. there. Oh, we've got a bunch of East Coasters today. Maybe I'll catch a few more of you now that I'm going on a little bit later. So welcome. Okay, good. So maybe my Wi-Fi is just tired with everybody on it all day. Um, and I'll just work, go for my, my phone 3G for now. So today we're going to be working on a beachy inspired necklace and I was doing a little cleaning of my um, beading space this morning and ended up pulling out a lots of different materials. So I'm excited to work with a few different materials with you today. Before I get into that, let me tell you what's going on over at softflexcompany.com. So right now we have a, we have two deals going on. We have a, um, buy a 30 foot spool of softlex beading wire and this is the fluorite color that's what I'm going to be using today so buy a 30 foot spool of softlex beading wire and you'll get a pack of bead stoppers for free and I think we've got them in the light blue color that we're giving away and these things are um, just essential. They're fantastic. They're little springs. They clip onto the end of your wire. They hold your beads in place. I've got them all over the place because um, I've got projects in process. You can just clip on a bead stopper, walk away from it for a while, come back when you're ready. Um, it's also crucial for me to use these when I'm beading so that um, I don't drop and lose all my beads, especially when I'm working on necklaces or um, bracelets where I want to check a size. I can clip on one, one or two of these bead stoppers on the two, two strands and hold it up without the fear of them all falling all over the place. So they're fantastic. So if you need to pick up some wire, grab a 30 foot spool and you'll get some free bead stoppers in there. Um, we also have a buy five, buy five spools of beading wire and you'll get 20% off all of them. And you can mix and match these with the 10 foot, the 30 foot, the 100 foot, and even the trios. Um, although one trio pack would equal one spool. Susie says, I love my bead stoppers. Yeah, they are the best and you really never can have enough. <laughs> so they're like such a wonderful little freebie to get in there when you're picking up your wire because they just are awesome. Um, so here I've got some of my favorite beachy colors since I'm sort of working on a beach vibe necklace here. I've got blue topaz, green turquoise, fluorite, bone and champagne. Yes, the sale does include our extreme um, beading wire as well, which doesn't always get included in carrot gold, I believe, due to the gold prices at the moment. And we don't know when we'll be placing a next order. Um, it'll just have to wait and see what goes on with gold pricing and that has to come down to an amount that makes sense for us to to place a large order but you can get our champagne color which is what this is and it's a really soft pretty um kind of rose gold feeling color that you can use with your gold jewelry um or you can pick up our pro econoflex and that has like a, a deeper brassier gold option um, and of course the extreme flex also has the 925 sterling silver while we don't have every single um, type and every single color in the extreme flex um, you grab what you can <laughs> it's a t it's a more difficult product for us to procure so it does take a little bit longer and because of the precious metals of the sterling and the 24 karat gold things do fluctuate with that product line a little bit so like i said you can you can get five 10 foot spools you can get um two 10 foot spools three 30 foot spools you can do two 10 foot, two 30 foot, and a 100 foot spool for a color that you use maybe the most often. Um, 
some of my favorite colors for that would probably be like a bone or our antique brass color, our copper color. Um, yeah, Karen is asking, one pack of trio is considered one spool for this sale. Yeah. So if you wanted to order five trios, you would get 20% off or you can do, um, you can do one trio, you could do a 30 foot, you could do a 10 foot, you could do a 100 foot. Uh, so that's basically how that works. The, the trio pack is considered one product. So that's why it's just, it, both those sales are good until tomorrow, which is August 11th at uh, midnight Pacific time. And um, I think the five, Yeah, I don't think the five um, quantity spool includes anything in outlet and close out. So just be aware of that if you were to put something into your cart that's from the close up. So you have to get them from the, the main beading wire category section. All right. Hello, Gail from Pittsburgh. Good to see you. What else do we have going on? We're gonna be working with the ammonite beads. We have some new ammonite beads over at softlexcompany.com. I have two of the four colors to share with you today. Um, and then I'm also gonna show you guys our Spice Market bead strand. I think we only have seven left. And uh, our new Spice Market design kit that matches and complements the bead strand. We have about 12 of those left in stock. And once those are gone, those are gone. Hi, Mary. Thanks for joining us today. So let's flip you down and let's look at some beads. Hello, Inga. Good to see you. Karen says it's freezing and coming in and out at times. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not sure why we're having such a rough connection today. I did take it off my Wi-Fi, so I'm just working on what the 3G can handle, I guess, at the moment, since we were having trouble on the Wi-Fi too. So the two tools I'll be working with today are the magical crimping pliers and the Italian flush cutters. I'm gonna be using this really pretty it's the fluorite beading wire in our medium, 0.019, and this is a 30-foot spool. If you guys are interested in doing any of the knitting projects, like the one Sarah just shared in the VIB group last week, um, those kind of projects, you definitely want to work with a 30-foot or a 100-foot spool. You can easily get a couple of projects out of a 30-foot, um, but if you want to make sure you definitely have enough or you want to, you know, really play and make quite a few, even go up to the 100 foot spool for those knitting things. I know that you can get um, a bracelet size out of the 10 foot, but it's just barely. So um, you really wanna work with more of a 30 foot or above. The sale is great if you wanna do any kind of knitting projects. So I'm gonna use the fluorite today. And these are the gorgeous new ammonite beads. I'm gonna be using this turquoise color for this today's beachy design. We also have them in a jade, a dark blue, like a cobalt blue. And this is the beige color. Hey, Karen, I'm not gonna be doing any knitting um, today, but we do have a knitting playlist here on YouTube that has all of our past knitting videos. I've done a few on um, the past, so has Sarah and so has James. Um, and I do know that Sarah just did a video over on Facebook last week with knitting. I believe she plans to do one here on YouTube with the same design, um, but I'm not exactly sure when. I don't know if she's doing that like in her next next video, I'm, I'm not sure. But I know she's got that on her agenda because it was so popular. So this is the beige color, which would work really pretty for a beach design also. It's got that like sandy beach tone, but I decided to hold off on that because 
I liked how it matched the Spice Market bead strand. So this is the Spice Market bead strand that I was talking about. We just have about seven left and I thought they went really well. So I decided to hold off on using this one today and put it aside for maybe using it to pair with Spice Market. So I'll put those aside. I'm going to be working with a few of our beads from the Serenity Shore design kit. So for those of you that got our last design kit, it was called Serenity Shore, and we had a bead strand like this in the color for Serenity Shore, and this is what I've got left of that bead strand. So I'm going to be working with these. Beautiful mother of pearl bead, boho bead. It's got this um, sea glass, some bone beads, some little spacers. Now this bead strand is sold out. We sold it out last month. Every month we introduce a new design kit and a new bead strand. So for this month, we've got Spice Market on, currently on sale with the Spice Market bead strand here. And this one is from last month from the Serenity Shore. So I've got those beads left over from the strand. And I've got a couple of Jesse James beads um, just in this aqua color I pulled out. Maybe gonna use them. And lastly, I've got the Serenity Shore bead mix. So again, when we do a design kit, we um, include an exclusive Jesse James beads bead mix inside of our design kit. This one was inside the Ser Serenity Shore. And then we all put it for sale um, when we reveal the design kit. And this bead mix sold out in record time one, because it is gorgeous, but also two, because we didn't have as many as usual due to the pandemic. Um, we should be back on track with our quantities as of this, this month in the spice market. So all of these beads are from the Serenity Shore bead mix. And I'll be using a handful of beads from here as well. And if you like what you see, like I said, this bead mix is sold out. It was our bead mix for last month, but we are gonna have a new bead mix for the spice market that's included in the kit. And then it'll also be for sale at the end of this month. So this just to give you an idea of all the little fun little things you get in these bead mixes. We had some really nice little sea charms, sea star, a little turtle, and turquoise, and then this like sandy So the bead mixes come with a mix of glass beads and bead caps and um fire polish beads, all sorts of good stuff. I found this shell while walking on the beach a while back. I think this is when, um, last time we were in New York, I did some shell picking and I found really lucky to have found a couple that had a nice little hole in the top. So I'm gonna use that. And I just wanted to, um, when you guys go out hunting for shells, take a look and see if you happen to find any that have a nice little hole perfectly in the top like that. So here is the start of what I'm gonna be doing 
with you guys today. I've got some beads strung on the fluorite beading wire. I have a nice bead stopper here to hold my place. And I connected it to this silk cord in like a gold color. And I made my first sliding knot. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. This silk cord is something that you can find on things like the Softlex Company Live Sales. So we've had some of these, some packages of these that we've sold in lots of different colors. We do those live sales on the Softlex Company Facebook page. If you are on Facebook, come join us over on Softlex Company um, and you'll be updated when we're live. We do them like every three weeks or so. And we also um, always tell you guys in our emails when we have our next one planned and you know when it's going to be. We usually have our sales open for a couple of days to shop. So this is some silk cord and I just did some knotting to create an adjustable knot here and then I created another looped knot and then connected it to Softlex wire on this side. I'm using it with this um, these really pretty connectors that came in the Serenity Shore bead mix. And therefore I just did a little loop because they have a hole for the wire to run through. But you could also use them like this and connect them this way. This is using the Tierra Cast um, 22 gauge bare copper Softlex craft wire to wrap it up. And I used about eight inches of wire and I just folded the cord over and then twist and wrapped it all the way until it was done. And the reason I went with the copper on this one is because I thought that this ring and this color actually goes really well with the spice market. So I think I'm gonna do something with that in a future in a future project. But I wanted to give you this idea of wrapping it around a ring I did here and just make a little loop and then attach it to beading wire. So to do that, let me just zoom in a little bit here. To do that, I would just fold over some of the cord at the bottom. Let me see how much I'm doing here. It's about three inches. That's probably a little more than you need folded over, but I'd always like to have a little more if, if able. And then I take the loop end, wrap it around my finger here like that. So I've got it wrapped up and around. And then I'm just going to tuck the looped part through that hole that I made with my finger and pull it, pull it down. And now I've got a nice little loop there. For this side, I'm just gonna pull it real nice and tight. Then you can trim off, you can use a pair of scissors too, you don't need cutters for this particular material. So then you just trim this off, cut it right there, and then take a piece, um, a little dab of glue, like special tea glue or hypo cement or E6000, and you just put a little glue there on the knot to keep it secure. Karen is asking, what gauge is it again? So I used the 22 gauge of craft wire to do the wrapping over here. Hi, Wendy, you're actually watching me live. I think you do usually watch the replay, but today I am on later than usual, and I'm going to be on later than usual from here on out while my kids are in remote schooling. Okay, so that's how you make your little loop there. I'm just gonna undo it because I'm gonna save this piece for my 
spice market project in the future. And the next thing I'm gonna show you is how you can do these adjustable knots so that you can change the length of your necklace. I started with two pieces of 22 inch cord. So I have two pieces of 22 inch cord and you would have one end connected to your connector or your little loop on that. And then this end is where you would have where you're gonna make your adjustable knots. So I'm gonna take the piece up top and I'm gonna fold it back like that. And I'm gonna also pick up this other piece below it. I'm gonna take this tail, go under both of them and through the loop, wrap it around again, through the loop, around one more time, through the loop, and then I'm gonna tug the end and pull these together. So, And now you've got your one side of your adjustable knot. Now we're gonna do the other side, so you're gonna take the one that is the short strand here, and we're gonna fold it back towards the right this time. You're gonna go under the two cords, through the center of this loop, under again, through the loop, and I do wanna go one more time. So let's see if I can get enough in there. One third time. Itty bitty through the loop. And pull that tight and scooch that down. And now you have those two knots where you can open this and you can adjust making your necklace longer or shorter. And that's gonna be on the back of my necklace so that I can decide if I wanna shorten it, I can pull those knots down and make that shorter, or I can pull those knots closer to one another, making my necklace longer. Yeah, Wendy, I know, I heard that I'm freezing up. I wonder if I needed to restart my modem. Since everyone's home working remotely, there are um, a lot of us on my internet and it could be that I have to restart my modem before I come live. So I apologize for that. I did switch it off of my Wi-Fi and put it on my 3G to see if that would help, but I guess it's still still freezing up just a little bit. Yeah, Karen, I had to watch it a few more, a few times too. I actually just learned it today before I came on here. Um, and so it's not tough, but I definitely had to stop and start it when I was watching my video <laughs> to see how to do it. So I would totally get if that's what you have to do as well. So now I'm gonna connect some Softlex wire to the little end of my loop here. I'm gonna trim off. Let's trim off about 12 inches. And I'm using the Softlex medium diameter 0.019 in the fluorite color, which is like a seafoam green. Really pretty. It matches these little beads here perfectly. And then I'm just going to take my Softlex wire and put it through that loop there on my cord. 
Gonna grab some crimp tubes. I am using Softlex crimp tubes in the gold filled, and these are two by two diameter. Uh, I'm gonna be using the magical crimping pliers, and it only works with the two by two diameter. So you slide on your crimp, and then you take your other end of your wire up through that crimp as well. Pull that tight. And this way you can make a nice connection there with your cord. I'm gonna use my magical crimping plier, which has one notch on each side. Place that right in the center with a nice squeeze, like a firm handshake. It's going to pinch the four corners. Just turn it on its side, put it back in there, and squeeze again. I wonder too, I don't know how you guys are at home, but I always feel like my, um, my service gets slower later in the day, so. That's kind of a bummer. I don't know if it's like a residential thing, but there's certain times of the day that it's just super slow and I pay for really fast internet. <laughs> so, so that is kind of a bummer when that happens. So now I have a really great little bead. My crimp tube turned into a bead with the magical crimping pliers. Wendy says, I'm in love with the magical crimp crimper. I ruined a few crimps in the beginning. Yeah, it's that's totally normal. I mean, you definitely are gonna have some that you're, I still ruin a few crimps here and there. Um, but you do get to a point where even if you ruin it, you can kind of figure out how to save it once you really know how the tool works and you've gotten comfortable with it so that's kind of nice i've been able to save quite a few and then i always have some crimp covers on hand if i really can't salvage it but it's holding securely you can always cover it with a crimp cover but most of the time it just is a beautiful little crimp so I'm gonna string through this connector that came in the Serenity Shore bead mix. I think some of you guys got circular ones and some of you got ovals. I got an oval, but I believe that they still function the same regardless of which shape. So I just have my wire going through there. I slid on this little bead, just like I did on this side, into the center. You can even add something larger because there's space, but I'm okay with letting the wire just kind of hang in the middle there. And then I'm gonna take my wire up through the other end and slide that down. And you'll see this bead will just sort of hang out on this wire going back and forth. And next I'm gonna grab these beads that are from my Serenity Sure, bead strand, and I should specify it was bead strand one because we actually had two of them. They both sold out super fast. You guys really love these colors, That's gorgeous. So these little bobbles of beads are from the Serenity Shore bead mix here, these two. A little spacer. And then I'm gonna pop on the Ammonite, which ugh, I just love these. They're so pretty. You can use them as a focal bead. I think they're gonna be adorable little earrings. Um, each strand comes with six of them on there to play with. And like I said, they come in four different colors. I just have the two here with me today. I have the turquoise and the beige. Another. 
which color is your favorite out of the four if you've seen them which one are you drawn to the most i think they're all so pretty all right so now i've got this strand and this strand i could take off this bead stopper for a second both strung the same this one has the spacer there which i like better so i think i'll change that on this one wendy says all of them sherry all pretty but i love the cool green yeah i you know i was like I only took two out of the four to get started because sometimes with these videos, you guys, the beads are like sold out before I even get a chance to play with them. <laughs> so I decided to just take two and then I think I'll go back and, and get the other two because I loved all the colors also. I thought the dark blue was super Grecian looking and really elegant and pretty. And then I love the jade green, of course, because I'm such a green girl. All right, so now what I'm gonna do here is I wanna bring this together and I'm gonna create a, like a little drop pendant here. This is the mother of pearl boho bead that came in the Serenity Shore bead strand, the first one. I don't know if I should crimp them together first or just put them through this bead. So let me put them through this bead and see, here we go. These boho beads are very hollow on the inside. So they're sometimes a little tricky to get the wire through. You guys ever picked up any of those speeder beaters? They're perfect for hollow beads. I think they, they have been enclosed out for a while but they are really good if you work with a lot of hollow beads. So I'm wondering if this is gonna be okay or if I should crimp there. I mean, really, it's gonna be more open like this. So I think it'll be okay. But Karen says crimp. Yeah, if you crimp, it is gonna like just make it a little neater. All right, let's go with crimping. So I'll pick up another crimp tube. Sherry says crimp too. Yeah, I think it'll make it a little bit cleaner looking. And I'm just gonna pull both of those strands up. Get that crimp right in the center. And sometimes you can even get that crimp in the center and then just move it up on your strand to get it positioned where you're happy with it. Once you crimp, you are done, you are crimped. So you do want to make sure you are happy before you go ahead and actually do it. For some reason,
huh. I struggled with this one a little bit. Let's see if I can salvage it. I just go back and grab my regular crimping pliers because I did kind of get it stuck in there and now I'll just do a regular crimp so what I'm gonna do is I placed the crimp in the back notch first crimped it down it creates a little divot and then put it on its side go into the first one and round that off I think it just kind of slipped out of my hand a little bit. Okay, so now it's secure and I don't have to worry about it not working. And let's see, we can get these wires through this boho bead again. Yeah, and then I'll go up right up to the crimp in a way that I don't think you'll even be able to notice. So I've got the mother of pearl bead, then I have that um, bead that looks like a little sea glass bead. And then I think I'm gonna go in through this shell and place one of these right in the center there. So it's kind of hugged in there. And I found this shell on a beach when I was doing some, some shell collecting. I just happened to find a couple that had some really nice little holes. I like the size of this one for, um, for a pendant. So this bead, this hole only goes through one wire of Softlex. So what I have to do is I'll have to crimp first and then add this in there. And I'm trying to decide. I have this little bead too. If I wanna put that at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and crimp here so that my shell stays in place. And due to where it's located, how it's sort of in that little space right there. I don't know if my magical crimpers will work. Let's see. I might be better off with the traditional crimper there also. Sometimes you just gotta work with the space you're given, you know? So if I 
I want to do that one here. I'm just gonna go down as close as I can go. I wonder if it'd be better if I did it there before I go in. I bet it'll just get, it'll just go right up into that bigger bead and you wouldn't even see it. Even better still, I don't actually even need two strands here because I primed it up here. So I can save myself a crimp because I did it up here. So let's do that instead. Let's just trim that off. We just have the one strand. And then I can do see if I didn't crimp up there, I would have had a crimp down here. But since I crimped up the top there, what do we think of that? I have these cute little tassels, even though they've got silver tops on them, I think that that's okay. Should I try and incorporate these tassels? What do you guys think? I think there were four of them. Maybe put all four down at the bottom here. Let's see. Sherry says yes. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place a crimp tube on first so that I can go back up into that crimp tube after creating a little loop. Then I'm gonna add the bone bead. And then I'm gonna add these. I wonder, ooh, I have these little, um, Let's see how they look, just to add a little gold element at the bottom. I have these twisted jump rings that we had on closeout for a little while. I don't know if I'm gonna like them or not, but I thought maybe it'll bring the gold element down at the bottom a little bit. We'll go back up through that bone bead so that we can pull this little group of tassels together. Back through the crimp tube. Pull that up. Oh, not that tight. Let's see how that hangs. Oh, I think it's cute. What do you guys think of keeping those jump rings in there? I think they add a little something and they bring in the gold element. And I like leaving kind of a larger loop. What do you think about that loop too? So here I'll kind of back off a little bit so you can see what we got going on here. Adorable. It is really cute. So you can always tighten this up if you wanted to, but I think I like leaving a little slack there so that these tassels hang real cute. All right, now let's see which crimp am I gonna use? Which crimp tool? I'd like to use this one if possible. Oh, 
Okay, it looks like I'm in there. Give it a squeeze. Turn it on its side. There were some tight spaces in this design. And what I did is I did push this bone bead kind of out, down and out of my way so that I could get in here. And then I'll just kind of pop it back up. Let's see if it'll, hopefully it'll stay in place. We'll see. And then just trim off that excess. All right, so what I'm seeing, but it's working out okay, but I am seeing what's happening is that because we don't have a crimp down here, it is pulling. This bead's kind of heavy. So it's kind of pulling away because I have some slack there. So, I have to get, maybe I can add even a crimp cover above this bead, above this crimp and pull it up a little bit more. All the things you gotta work out, right? Oh, it's so cute. Let's see. I don't know if I should do a crimp cover on camera. <laughs> usually they usually they cause me cause me a lot of grief. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> All right, well, let me figure out where I really want to put this. So I would like for, this bead here to not have so much weight coming down. So it has to come, push this up. So it's like, it has to be either in here, or we can even put it kind of over there, in between there, and that might be enough. Or even in between there, under the white bead, under this one here, right, right there. You think? We'll give us a little, give us a little space. All right, I'm going in. I'm using the, oh, well, the little one's not gonna do anything though, Sherry, because of this, because the crimp is on top of it. And I need to fill in the space between this crimp and this crimp. So by putting it down here, I'm not actually helping that slack that I've got in between. So I either got to put it under here, or I can even try and put it like right here. Yeah, it's just the way it was when I when I crimped this one, I, I must not have had um, these beads pulled back tight enough to see that I had that little slack there. I could even put it right there, but I have a feeling it's gonna look a little wonky and I'm wondering if I should stick it kind of in between these two big beads so you don't see it. <laughs> so it gets a little lost. <laughs> Cause I know me and crimp covers, they're not, we're not the best friends. <laughs> All 
All right. Okay. So we've got it. We've got it started here. Got it going. Let's see where. If I can just close it a little bit more. <gasps> oh, I think that worked. I think that worked. It's still pulling down a little bit, but not as bad. And I could even do something with that one. If I want to put another cover, crimp cover right there, I think it would probably um, really help. Oh, you see. Well, that was fun. I'm glad I had a little bit of a of a what do I do now moment. <laughs> it's always it's always good to see how you can work through those things without having to fully start over. I'm going to go ahead and try and put this guy around here too. And so I am using a, I think these look like the three millimeter crimp covers. All right. Yeah, that worked there too. Awesome. So cute. Let me get a neck so that we could put it on a neck piece and see how it looks. All right, I'm gonna flip you guys up. This way I can show you how it looks here. <sighs> On a neck piece, and I'm gonna actually tighten it. And there we go. Just sort of twist those guys around really cute it's just got the gold behind it and i have these tightened down i'm just going to leave these little pieces here because you don't want to glue um you don't want to accidentally glue any of this to the cord otherwise you won't get to adjust it so pretty and i'm excited to see how long so this is the shortest it would be which i have no idea what the length is. <laughs> Let's see if the shortest would go over my head. Ooh, just about. And then you can pull it back and make it extra long too, which is probably how I'd end up wearing it most of the time. Ooh, just like that. Yeah. Super fun. And thanks for helping me out with those crimp covers. <laughs> it was really neat to work with um, the silk cord today. I don't usually use that. I've actually never designed with it before. So I had to learn how to make that adjustable knot and play with making the knots on the ends because um, that's not usually a material we've got. But like I said, we do tend to sell them on some of our live sales. And that particular cord was from our friend, Rochelle Pinnell, who is in the VIB group. She had sent me some cords to play with a while ago. And that was the first time um, I have ever, ever used them. Karen, what are you saying? You have a question? Oh yeah, go for it. Thanks, Mary. Lee it says it's cute. Annie says lovely. Wendy loves it. Sherry, very pretty. 
Thanks, guys. So what's your question, Karen? Did I, I just don't want to miss it. While Karen's getting her question together, I just gotta remind you guys that we've got the buy five spools mix and match between trios and that counts as one or 10 foot, 30 foot, 100 foot spools. And that goes across all the brands. So you can do soft flex, you can do soft touch, you can do the Econoflex, the Pro Econoflex, or the Extreme. So if you want to try and uh, try a few different things out, that is a great sale. You'll get 20% off all of them. And if you buy more than five, you'll get 20% off any over five that you buy. Um, and if you just grab a 30-foot spool of Softlex uh, beading wire, the 0.19 medium, in any of the colors, you'll get a free pack of bead stoppers, and that's good until end of day tomorrow. Hey, Karen, did we lose you? What's up? I just wanna make sure I answer your question before I pop off here today. <laughs> I hope everyone else has a wonderful week. She's repairing an elastic bracelet and can't get the knot to stay. What do I do? Um, have you, okay, so two questions. The elastic bracelet that you're repairing, is it possible to get two strands of the elastic through the beads instead of one strand? Chrissy will have to watch later. Yeah, it was really a fun design today, Chrissy. I hope you come back and watch the replay. No, okay, so you can only do one strand through the beads. Um, I would do, I think it's called a surgeon's knot in that case. And I would also make sure to add some glue to it. Um, we have the special T glue that we suggest for elastic bracelets and why we suggest it is it's a gap filling glue. It gets in all the little spaces and it dries um, pliable so it doesn't dry hard and brittle like say like crazy glue or something would. Um, it dries actually pliable so that when you're taking a bracelet on and off and stretching it, it's not going to uh, crack at the knot. I do have a a video let me see if I can find it and I'll link it here hold on just a second I do have a video that I did with um, one strand of elastic when you can get two strands in I highly recommend the tricky Ricky knot Ricky from Dakota stones does this very special knot with elastic bracelets but you do need two strands going through the beads for it to work so when you can do that I suggest using that one. And I know I've got, okay, I'm gonna, I did one called um, DIY beaded stretch elastic bracelet tutorial for kids. And that one says no glue. So I have a feeling that might be the tricky Ricky one. Well, let me link this one. Okay, there's one video. And then I'm gonna see. I know we've done a couple. Let me actually link one of Sarah's videos for you too, because sometimes it's good to just, I know she doesn't always do things the same way that I do them. <laughs> so sometimes it's good to get two different perspectives. Oh, it didn't let me Hey, Karen, will you, it didn't let me share the links, it, I guess because it's a, 
it's, it must be a YouTube setting that doesn't allow you to add any addresses in there when you're not logged in as the admin. Will you send me an email? You can email me at Kristen, K-R-I-S-T-E-N at softflexcompany.com. And then I will send you back um, some videos and some suggestions for you to take a look at and see if that helps. That'll probably be the, the best way to do it since YouTube's not letting me. The elastic feels funny, kind of hard even after stretching. Maybe the elastic that you're using is the problem. Um, we generally use Stretch Magic. That's the one that uh, we've always carried and we've always used. We like that one the best. So I don't know if there's um, an issue with the actual stretchy cord. Mary's asking how old is it? Yeah, it's possible that after time, like the, the, mater the material that it's made with is getting a little brittle. All right, so shoot me an email and I will respond that way with some links and some info and we can talk a little bit more um, to help you help you work on that bracelet. I know stretch can be kind of funny <laughs> and you want it to hold. So definitely one of the ones that it's, you know, you want to make sure it's secure. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Thanks so much for joining me here. And remember, this will be my new time from this point going forward. While the kids are home working remotely at school, I'll be here at 3 p.m. Pacific time, 6 p.m. Eastern on Mondays with new episodes of Free Spirit Feeding. You're welcome. Have a great week, everybody. And uh, enjoy those beachy vibes. Those of you that are by the coast, I, I really wish I can be there. So vicariously, I'm living through that in my jewelry designs because I am landlocked over here. <laughs> so if you are by a coast, go out and enjoy it. Go get some, go check out some waves and hang out on the beach and relax if you can, if your beaches are open. Um, nature is so soothing and just so good for the soul. Bye.